It is 88 Days Till the Man Burns, and today we're talking about RVs and all that hate you might see online if you have Googled bringing an RV to Burning Man. Because I've seen some posts in forums where people are pretty harsh about bringing RVs, saying they should be banned. I've seen people that own RVs posting in forums about whether or not they should bring their RV because there's so much hate about them, you know, maybe they should leave their RV at home. An RV they own, not one they're renting for Burning Man, like they own it to do trips like that in and they're thinking of leaving it at home because they feel like they'll be shunned at Burning Man for daring to come in an RV. So the big question, is all that hate real? I think online it is real and I think at Burning Man it's not real. Or it's a very small minority of people, even online it's probably a very small minority of people that go to Burning Man that actually care about your sleeping arrangements, about how you decide to do Burning Man. Everyone's there for their own burn, like what does it matter what you're sleeping in? How does that affect them? Unless they're your direct neighbor and you are doing something to be annoying because an RV is a great tool to annoy your neighbors. So, you know, that's kind of the first problem and part of where RVs have got this bad reputation from and that's just being inconsiderate to your neighbors, you know, running your generator at stupid times, having all the fumes pumping into someone else's camp instead of your own, you know, just, just generally being a nuisance. And those kind of things are easily solvable. You know, it's your generator, it should be making noise in your camp, not parked right next to someone else's camp on the border of yours so that it's annoying them. You know, if you've got things that are making fumes, those fumes should not be going directly into someone else's camp. They're kind of quite easily solvable things. People that do those things, they would probably still be bad, inconsiderate neighbors even if they came in a tent. It's just an RV is, you know, a great tool for annoying people. Really like ups the level of annoyance if you are gonna be a bad neighbor. And being able to come in an RV is a great option for people that maybe otherwise wouldn't be able to come, you know, Pregnant people, disabled people, elderly people, some of them may not be able to camp in a tent, some of them might actually need the RV. Then there's the people that are working or doing something at Burning Man that are doing very long hours that having an RV makes that possible. And that doesn't mean that you need some special circumstance to justify you bringing an RV. You know, if you want to bring an RV, like maybe you just want air conditioning. Maybe you don't want to have to check the toilets in the middle of the night. Maybe you already own an RV, like why would you come in a tent if you own an RV specifically for going on trips like this? Like why would you leave it at home? You, you own it. Like it really doesn't matter why you want to bring an RV. You have just as much right as everyone else around you to do Burning Man the way you want to do it. And if that's bringing an RV, it's bringing an RV, they are not banned. Another issue that people seem to have with RVs is participation level. They say, oh, well, when people come in RVs, they don't participate. And firstly, like, how do people know that? Like, how much time do you spend watching your neighbors when you're at Burning Man? Like, there's a million other things to do, and you're like, what, sitting? Just like watching an RV to see how much the people come out of it and how much they participate? I mean, it doesn't sound like the most interesting way to spend Burning Man to me, but fair play. Everyone can have their own burn however they want. And part of the culture is participating, and I do think that everyone should participate as much as they can and as much as they're comfortable with. But I feel like no one looks at the people coming in tents and they're like, mm, that tent goer, she's not, not participating enough. She only participated for two hours today, it's, it's not enough. And also, there can be reasons why someone's not participating, you know? Maybe that person's burnt out, maybe they're ill, maybe they're hungover, maybe they have anxiety, maybe they have a, a reason why they're not participating. It's just they happen to have an RV that they can kind of stay in when they're choosing to not participate. You know, maybe it's midway through and you're like, you know, I just need a chill day. I think I'm just not really going to do too much today. I'm just going to chill out and read a book. And, you know, that's fine. No one's looking at someone that came in a tent and they're like, wow, that person, you know, I can't believe they're just reading a book today. How dare they not participate? And I feel like that's kind of how it comes across when you read what people are writing in forums about RVs. Like, you're almost being judged by other people, like, to hit some kind of imaginary targets of, like, participation and what time you put your generator on and how long for and how many decibels is it. 
And, you know, did you do one of these things that makes you a nice Alvia? Did you use your freezer to make popsicles for people? Did you invite people in to let them use your air conditioning and charge their devices? And, you know, again, no one's telling other people, no one's like, oh, hey, you should let people into your tent because you have a really nice tent or, you know, you should, you have a cooler, so you should share the stuff in your cooler with other people. And it should be the same for people that come in RVs. You're not under any obligation to do these things. You don't need to ingratiate yourself to the people around you because you dare to come in an RV, like because of the sleeping arrangements that you chose to come to Burning Man. You don't need to apologize for that. You need to make it up to the people around you and be like, here, have some popsicles. Please don't hate me because I came in an RV. Like they are nice things to do if you want to do them, but you're not obligated to do them. You don't feel like you need to do these things as some kind of apology. Do what you're comfortable with. If you are not comfortable with having people that are not part of your group come into your RV, that's fine. You are under no obligation to do that. You do not need to plan to bring extra supplies so that you can make food for other people or make popsicles and things like that. It should just be something that you do if you want to do that. The same with like gifting, you know, you don't have to gift. But if you want to, you can, it's not obligatory. And it's the same with RVs. If you choose to use your RV as a way to gift other people, great. If you don't, if you're not comfortable, you don't want to, whatever, like don't, it's absolutely fine. And you'll often see a point that like, oh, it's so ugly to see a wall of RVs. But yeah, it's not exactly pretty to see a ton of tents either. Like tents aren't exactly the most beautiful thing to look at. It's a good job we've got all that art and those theme camps and stuff we can go and look at. Like, because where people sleep is not that interesting compared to everything else that's going on at Burning Man. Like I say, I do think that it is a minority that are kind of so against RVs. And I do think it's something that people kind of go crazy about online, but at Burning Man, you don't really experience that. Everyone is entitled to their own opinion. I think it's fine if people don't like RVs, you know, they are free to let the world know that. But I kind of think the way it's being done is very off-putting for first timers. And it's generally, it's not the people that are bad RVers that are being affected by that. It's the people that really actually care. You know, the people that are seeing that information are the people that are looking at bringing an RV to Burning Man and how to do it in a good way, how to, you know, be part of the community, how to not annoy their neighbors. And instead of getting that information, they're just kind of confronted with quite a lot of hate, really. And I think it can be very off-putting for first timers and you know, that's a shame. If you are still feeling a bit nervous about bringing an RV and you feel like you're gonna be ostracized from the community for your choice of sleeping arrangement, then, you know, bear in mind that no one's really gonna know you've come in an RV unless you tell them or they're your neighbor. So just not tell people. <laughs> you don't have to be like, hi, I came in an RV. You can just, you know, not mention it and then no one will know. You know, all that time you're out there having adventures, your RV can be like your dirty little secret. So guys, I would love to hear your thoughts on RVs at Burning Man in the comments below, but you know, please keep it respectful. Don't start yelling at each other and stuff. I know that you guys will be nice in the comments because you are the loveliest people. My comment section is like my favorite place. And if any of you have any experience of bringing an RV to Burning Man, then I'd love to hear about it in the comments as well. So I hope this was helpful guys, and that any of you that were planning to bring an RV that were feeling a bit nervous about it, feel a lot less nervous about it. And yeah, I will see you later. Bye guys.